my name is Sarah Kortz, and I'm a visiting librarian to McFarland here to visit Anne. Um, I'm a former librarian myself, and I'm here to talk about my year in gardening books. Uh, my gardening year starts in February, what I like to call in Wisconsin, deepest, darkest winter. And in February, I have all sorts of hopes and dreams. I think I'm going to become a self-reliant gardener and make, grow all my own food. So I start with books like Will Bonsell's Essential Guide to Radical Self-Reliant Gardening by Will Bonsell. And you can see this is a hefty book. It's a big one. It's got a lot of text. It's got some pictures, but not a whole lot. And Will Bonsell talks about compost and cabbages and plants and really how to become an extremely self-reliant gardener. And you know he's serious because this book is from Chelsea Green Publishing. And Chelsea Green does a lot of homesteading books and self-reliant, and all of their books are meaty and serious. And in February and March, I will read Will Bonsell. I like this book a lot because he talks about the reason people do garden. And one thing he talked about was that he gardens to survive a future catastrophe, but there are some problems with that. And he says, I call this the Titanic scenario. Most of us passengers can see the iceberg ahead, but no one can seem to change the ship's course in time. A self-reliant lifestyle might seem like a viable lifeboat, but it's probably useful only as a short-term strategy. Reliance on self-reliance presumes that you're so fully detached from the ship that you will not be sucked down with it, but it's a very big ship and the suction will be incredible. It also presumes that you have an ample supply of every necessity and that other survivors who will be in the same boat will let you keep it to yourself. And I liked that a lot. It shows that Will Bonsell has a good grip on reality. Um, but eventually I'll realize this book is too much for me and I'll put it down. And I'll try again with another Chelsea Green book, another big thick one, called something like The Resilient Gardener, Food Production and Self-Reliance in Uncertain Times by Carol Depp, or Deppy, Carol Depp. This is another big beautiful book. Fewer pictures, I'm going in the wrong directions, but they're, they're nice and colored. And Carol Depp includes a lot of great information, including gardening and climate change and different conditions. She includes 33 reasons why you should garden, lots of great stuff. But when I start reading this, now we're talking March and April, and I'm realizing Chelsea Green may just be too much for me. So then I will ask my sister, who actually does raise almost all her own food, what she reads, and she will say something like Straw Bale Gardens by Joel Karsten. My sister is a huge fan of straw bale gardens. And this, when I'm reading it in March or April, seems doable because look at all these pictures. Thinner, thinner book, different publisher, thinner book, bigger pictures, beautiful layouts, straw bale gardens. So the idea is you buy straw bales and you plant things in that and then you don't have to weed it, which is very attractive to me. And I get very, very excited about this again through April and as April goes on and then I realize I don't actually know where to get straw bales. And then we have some problems. So as much as I enjoy reading this, and I, I will read parts of it, look at that basil plant. I will read parts of it, but again, by the time April rolls around, I'll know I need something different. And then because I live in the city, I will go for I Garden Urban Style, Grow the Garden That Fits Your Space and Schedule by Reggie Solomon and Michael Nolan. This is another beautiful book. A lot of great pictures here. This book focuses mainly on containers, container gardening, urban gardening. This is my favorite, casual container gardening. Everything I do is extremely casual, if you can't tell. Um, so I like this book a lot. And I actually might take some tips from this through April and May. I might buy a couple plants when I first go out to the market, and I will use this. It's a very, it's actually, this is actually a really nice book. Anything with container gardening, I garden, urban garden, these are kind of your garden light books. But now it's May in my reading year, and I'll realize even I Garden Urban Style is too much. So then I will go to How to Grow Your Own Food, an illustrated beginner's guide to container gardening by Angela Judd. And this I will really enjoy because it goes through all the plants one by one with layouts like this. And I call this illustrated seed packets that I can read in the comfort of my own home rather than um, at the hardware store while my kids are bugging me. 
So this gives you the plants, how you grow them, uh, the difficulty level, very important for me. I go through them with all the easy difficulty, when you should grow them, good things to know, celery in containers. And this I will actually use through May and June and July. I have a container right now at home with basil and one with, one with mint. Um, let's look up this mint. Mint. Difficulty level, easy. So you can see this has been a very nice book for me and it's beautiful just to look at. It's a fairly new one. I think it's 2020 or, or newer. But as summer wears on, I will remember that I am not a gardener and I will start to look for different gardening books. And I will come across one of my very favorites from an author and an illustrator named Vivian Swift. And her watercolor beautiful book is called Gardens of Awe and Folly. And I like this book a lot. And this I will start to read in the fall and in the winter when I need to remember what was beautiful about gardening. And as I start to, you know, put away my garden, I harvest the sprig of mint. And it's time to move on. She takes you to all these different gardens in the world. Uh, Paris. She spends a lot of time in Paris because she really likes Paris. She spends time in a winter garden in Edinburgh. She also goes to Key West. So there's a lot of beautiful greens, um, reds, all sorts of... She tells you a little bit about the history of the place and things that are going on. Um, this one, I'm not sure. This one might be more cash. Look at the blues. But one of my very favorites is New Orleans. She talks to somebody who lived through Katrina in New Orleans. And I'll just show you this picture because I love it. Oh, it just makes me want to go there. Green and red and a doggy in the middle. It's all beautiful. And this is what Vivian has to say. She says, of all the ways a garden can come into being, this is my favorite. Uh, in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, Karen lived in her driveway for an entire year in a trailer, so long that even her chihuahua got claustrophobia. If you had to live in your driveway for a year, you too would come to loathe the sight of it. So as soon as she gave FEMA back their trailer, Karen planted her old parking space with 12 kinds of roses. Because, as Karen says, what lady doesn't deserve a dozen roses? She wrote this book. She'll tell you why she wrote this book. She went to Brazil and she saw a poinsettia tree. Not just a poinsettia, a poinsettia tree. And it was so beautiful because she said, where I come from, poinsettias are small disposable house plants. A towering poinsettia tree, its branches Sifting a June moonlight as cool as January was a set of circumstances that I had never envisioned. This now strikes me as a pitiful lack of imagination on my part. And here's the end where she says your Rio de Janeiro gardening tip is to love the world, praise it with a garden. And she explains that she wrote this entire book because she told everybody about the poinsettia tree and nobody said, wow. And she wanted them to say, wow. So she wrote this beautiful book. So you could say, wow, about gardens. And now in my year of gardening, we are around to November and December, and I need a cozy mystery. I need something that includes gardenings, but is not necessarily about gardening. So I will end up with Agatha Raisin and The Potted Gardener. And if you have never read M.C. Beaton's English cozy mysteries about her sleuth, Agatha Raisin, who is somewhat of a grumpy uh, retired PR professional in London, who moves to the Cotswolds, which in, are known in the UK for their beautiful gardens and their beautiful yards. Uh, Agatha is wonderful. The mysteries are wonderful. You should read all of them because they all involve some mention of gardens and sitting in gardens, having tea, and mysteries that revolve around gardens. And this one, The Potted Gardener, certainly does. So I will leave you with the scene I read in December, getting back around to deepest, darkest winter when Agatha and her neighbor James go to check on another neighbor of theirs, Mary Fortune, who Agatha is actually not that fond of because she's a rival for James's affections, and this is what happens. James ran up the stairs calling, Mary, Mary. Agatha stood in the hall, waiting uneasily. She had never considered herself a fay or even a sensitive person, but as she stood there, she began to feel a creeping unease. Not home, said James, coming back down the narrow staircase. There's her conservatory at the back, said Agatha. We might as well make a proper job of it. Afterwards, she was to wonder at her sudden persistence when, a moment before, all she had wanted to do was forget the whole thing and return to the pub with James. So they walk into the house, and then Agatha said in a choked voice, Look! Look over there! 
And James looked. Someone had planted Mary Fortune. Her head was not visible. It was covered in earth. Someone had hung her upside down by her ankles and buried her head in earth, in a large earthenware pot. There were hooks on the ceiling beams for hanging plant pots. Someone had tied her ankles with rope and slung her up on one of those hooks. She was dressed in that inevitable color of green she always wore. Green sandals, green blouse, and green shorts. Well, that's not very nice, but that's about as shocking as Agatha Raisin gets, and she's worth it as a protagonist. And they do catch who did it, and justice is served. Trust me. But that's where I end up. And then by the time I am done reading Cozies and getting through the holidays, it's the deepest, darkest winter. And I'll go, hey, Will, teach me how to be a self-reliant gardener. Thank you for uh, listening to my year of gardening in books. And enjoy your McFarlane library. It's great.